Good afternoon. My name is Salim al Bakhloli, and I'm the Associate Director of El Maurad Arab Center for the Study of Art at NYU Abu Dhabi. El Maurad is a research center housed in the Research Institute that supports the interdisciplinary study of the visual arts in the region, through a range of archival and research programs. One of those programs is a scholar artist residency, and we are very privileged to have as our second scholar artist resident, the artist Hanamo Allah. Hana once told me that uh, when she left Iraq in 2006, she took two books with her. One was Ludwig, Ludwig Wittgenstein's Tractatus Logical Philosophicus, a work of analytic philosophy written on a battlefield during the First World War that tried to define logic in terms of that which language shares with the world, with reality. The other book was The Conference of the Birds uh, by Farid Aldino Attar, an allegorical poem written in the 12th century that narrates the soul's search for truth, the story of a group of birds who set out to look for a guide. I think these two titles say a lot about the intellectual universe within which Hana developed as an artist. One, the theoretical rigor of the 20th century, and on the other hand, the concrete, hermeneutically inexhaustible figures offered by the deep traditions of the past, Islamic tradition, but especially the material culture of ancient Mesopotamia. Hana belongs to what might be described as the third generation of modern artists in Iraq. As was the case in Syria, Lebanon, and Palestine, the practice of modern art developed in Iraq on the basis of a practice of landscape painting that was taught in the Ottoman War College in Istanbul and then circulated to the provinces. The first generation of modern artists in Iraq consisted of artists who, during the 1940s and 1950s, and under the leadership of a few artists who had studied in Europe, pursued the formulation of a national style that would reflect the new political entities that formed after the breakup of the Ottoman Empire. The second generation came of age in the 1960s, and their practice was at once more individual and shaped by a cultural Arabism that had emerged in the 1970s, particularly around the Palestinian liberation movement. A third generation of artists, to which Hanama Allah belongs, came of age in the shadow of the Iran-Iraq War and the Gulf War. It was consecrated by a series of exhibitions held following the end of the 1991 Gulf War. And the work of this generation was marked by an experimentation with new methods and materials as a result of the scarcity of supplies due to the sanctions imposed by the UN on the country. Hana's practice is paradigmatic of this generation of artists. Hana graduated from the Institute of Fine Arts with a degree in graphic design in 1978 and with a degree in oil painting from the University of Baghdad in 1989. Between 1976 and 1983, she worked as an illustrator for the what it was the first illustrated children's magazine in the Arab world, Majality, and she illustrated 13 children's books. In 1985, she won an award from UNESCO for two of these books. In 1983, she was recruited by the newspaper El Jumhuria to illustrate a weekly column, and her illustrations were so admired by the public that soldiers posted on the front of the Iran-Iraq war sent letters to the newspaper expressing their appreciation for her illustrations. In 1987, Hana left her work as an illustrator to focus on her practice as an artist, turning the skills she had honed as an illustrator to archeological artifacts in the Iraq Museum. These artifacts had been a source of inspiration for each generation of modern artists in Iraq, but Hana developed a, a new singular way of looking at these objects she reinterpreted these objects in semiotic terms, which is to say that she saw their forms not simply as aesthetic or decorative, but as a language in which the natural world has been symbolically transfigured into signs. This semiological approach to thinking about form governed her practice over the next 15 years. And importantly, it led her to collapse the distinction between archeological artifacts and the natural environment, and to extend her semiological research to the urban and human fabric of the city of Baghdad. This research resulted in a body of artwork that Hana showed at a sequence of solo shows in Baghdad during the 1990s and early 2000s. But it also led to the formulation of a logical theory of painting that she elaborated in a master's and doctoral thesis, which she completed in 2005 at the University of Baghdad. In 2006, Hana left Iraq for an artist residency at the Institut de Monde Arabe in Paris, and that was followed by fellowships at the School of Oriental and African Studies and the Chelsea College of Art in London. She has in the past few years exhibited widely in New York, London, and throughout the region. 
Anna is an accomplished artist and theorist, uh, but she's also an educator and taught for over 20 years at the Institute of Fine Arts, University of Baghdad, and the Royal Women's University of Bahrain. So I think she's very, she feel, I hope she feels very at home with us here at New York University Abu Dhabi. Uh, first, thank, uh, thanks for your coming. And uh, I would like first, uh, first of all, I really would like to thank uh, El Maurit for uh, giving me opportunity for this uh, artist residency and give chance for talks. And one of them, this one. Uh, I would be first as, as well. I would like to brief you about my uh, research and my um, uh, art practice, how they are overlapping. Uh, in my uh, in my practice, the task of doing the research and uh, producing visual work always proceed in tandem, using different tools, uh, techniques to uh, conduct it. Also, the uh, practice could be collective uh, or to be achieved just by myself. So producing visual work uh, as a tool towards understanding and communicate with the subject or to illustrate uh, my thought and help not just to uh, crystallize the idea, but add visual layer to the idea, form of visual explication. And this picture, it is a really good example uh, of how the overlapping between my research and visual artwork. So here it is, uh, you can see this, uh, this uh, two portrait link to one research paper. Uh, it is already posted in, uh, in a blog in my website and here it is the link. And uh, it is a collective research paper, a tree of researchers, one of them uh, myself. And when, uh, when I was put, in, put the, um, uh, the first draft of research paper, I produced this artwork the uh, two portrait, the first portrait is original one with the lady layered put, uh, um, put uh, uh, hair jewelry, which was made from artifacts, uh, uh, Mesopotamian Assyrian artifacts. And I replaced hair jewelries with uh, this jewelry, which was made by exploded car in uh, at the Mutanabi Street in 2007. So this is just very, I mean, I can't go deep in this paper, but just give you example how the uh, visual uh, textual, textual and visual uh, practice uh, overlapping. It looks, uh, it looks, uh, um, my practice for like uh, 45 year, uh, years deal with the one subject, ruins but in different aspects. May that referencing my physical experience to be within ruins most of my life, whether archeological Mesopotamia ruins or wars, debris, uh, war, wars, debris and uh, rebels. So it is reflecting my being there in Iraq. Now, as I based in UK, I look at, at it from different uh, distance. This distance gives me a space to look at it differently. And before I, I continue, I just would like to, to mention that this paper, I mean my talk today, not substantiate any idea, but check if the idea has reasonable assumption. So just please just put this in account when I talk. It is for this very reasons I choose Mesopotamia as a site of my research subject to focus on the concept of ruins. Mesopotamia with its extensive time span gives a scope to examine my hypothesis that ruins is not merely the site of life from which life has departed, but rather exists as a kind of development and the process as a function of time. I approach ruination as a time travel uh, and ruins as a physical form of uh, a portal connection distant points in time. The question here, could Mesopotamian ruins be seen or used as hypothetical time machine as a vehicle? Uh, this, is, uh, this is, I just derived it from uh, Dolezian, I mean, uh, Dolez uh, theory. I call it the fluidity of time on the matter. 
I approach concept of ruins as a symptom of time and ecology effects and sequences of currents, which all, uh, allows us to understand and experience an incessant dialectical process between ruination, regeneration, and existence as a process of life and effect transformation within that. Uh, I just would like to speak about this photograph. This photograph exhibited in uh, our most recent exhibition at the Brunei Gallery London in Sawas. And this is by my mobile camera. Uh, it is at Nufar archaeological site. In, uh, in December 2008, uh, after two rainy days, uh, I, want to, uh, I want to go to uh, Nufar archaeological site. And um, uh, I had advised uh, not to. Because, uh, because the, um, the archaeological site, the surface of archaeological site, uh, sites become, becomes very fragile and unstable to walk on it. So, uh, but rather, uh, 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 nevertheless, I went. And once we, uh, we, when I said we, because we, I am with the research, uh, research team, our research team, once we enter the site, uh, I mean, we really are faced with the breathtaking, unforgettable, uh, bewitching uh, site. Uh, as all the site formed by rain and all the mound, it is from uh, archaeology, archaeological artifacts, all of them uh, was risen uh, to the top to catch the light of the sun in that, in that day. And uh, it is just, uh, uh, just glistened uh, uh, under the sun. And uh, just I would like, so we produce, I mean, we exhibit this is as a photograph in our exhibition and we produce as well this an artwork. And uh, from our emotion, we write the sentences and we exhibit this, this um, I mean, this picture and this is other example to show you how the research and producing visual art is, is overlapping. So the, Uh, the very landscape of ancient Mesopotamia littered with its ancient uh, ruins allows us to encounter contradictory forces of past and present and experience the uh, in equilibrium where that struggle between above, between above and below come to a standstill with its insistent uh, moving up and down. It, uh, it's uh, cons constant shifting of boundaries and the playing of the inexhaustible forces in it, one against the other. In this way, I am able to tap the innermost energy of Mesopotamian ruins and exploit its regeneration, uh, regen regeneration power rather than approaching it merely as an ancient relic. Ruination now is understood as a just a change in materials state not as an alienation. As an artist and researcher, I focus on Mesopotamian uh, ancient ruins as a shaking off instead of applying the uh, preconception uh, of archaeologists that might uh, otherwise give a premature shape and thereby con convert every uh, certainty into question. Obviously, our technique to approach the ancient ruins is not a technique which you usually use by archaeologists to collect data of the past, but to learn how to experience the ruins and ruination and get what I call it a practice knowledge. I just would like to, uh, to mention that all our research paper and what we produce from artwork, visual artwork, or say visual work, uh, all of them uh, comes from uh, our uh, experience. We experience physically to visit the archaeological site or visit the museum to see the, the artifacts there. And then we start to build our research paper and to, build, uh, uh, to produce uh, visual work. So whenever we do anything from any image from online or printed image, so it is from, that is why I, I, 
I, I mean, uh, I focus on this. We have to have a uh, experience in in the archaeological site inside Iraq, and then uh, we experience all the thing, thing, and then we produce the research paper and the other uh, the other visual work, and we uh, shape that research paper. Uh, so from our practice knowledge, what what I call it. Uh, we uh, shape that, uh, uh, we shape that, uh, our, I mean, experience as a rich research paper and visual work. Uh, in a nutshell, could archaeological ruins do approach to extrapolate the future, not just collect past data? <coughs> but modern Iraq is not only a landscape of ancient ruins. It is also littered with the effects of its more recent wars. Here we encounter ruination as a form, forms of rubble, evidence in its modern cities as a destruction and death. Here we find the loss of culture and uh, identities, all uh, is chaos and destruction with a little hope for any future. Here is where we understand for the yards uh, notion of the lethal yeah. energy in ruins. The uh, I, this is uh, I mean this is from his text uh, anoxic uh, ruins. I think when he spoke about uh, uh, Berlin Wall. Uh, uh, so in the in, uh, on the contrary, turning to Iraqi's ancient sites, these antiquities are not experienced as a debris and destruction but as uh, sites that are alive and full of hope. They are evidence of our past, which is uh, uh, active in the present. Here we find hope and life. I mean, uh, I mean, for us, what we got from this one, from this at archaeological site, completely different energy, we call it life energy. Uh, positive energy, and if you compare this heap of archaeological uh, artifacts uh, uh, and uh, with this one, so I'm asking you, I, I mean, maybe you tell me in the end, uh, what kind of energy you will get from this or from this? This is rubble, I mean, and the other one, it is of, from war. Uh, so this is the, we, we concentrate on this differentiation between rubbles and ruins. Here is a, a possible dialogue. Uh, here, here is a possible dialogue between the status of ancient Mesopotamian ruins and that evidence as the ruins perpetuate, perpetuated by the violence of recent wars in Iraq. My endeavor is to uh, discuss these differences where the ancient archaeological ruins uh, become sites of uh, as positively positively uh, uh, forces of existing life power transformation, giving hope in the present and shaping more positive future futures, contracting the lethal energy of ruins uh, that is experienced as uh, experience as modern Iraq. And me, I mean uh, with the with the with the logic thing, the trajectory of time is past, present, Future. This is hypothesis one. We said it is a present, past, and the future. Because the present, I mean, I explain in the paper and research paper, this is per se first step for second phase of our research. We said it is different, the trajectory different. It is present, past, because present is very poor and the past is very rich, and we look for, uh, for, for the futures. I mean, here it is. I can't explain like this. This went as well in Nufar site. When I went uh, in, in 2018, uh, December, and uh, we found this in Nufar site. Some, some young guys, uh, they wrote their name by, uh, by archaeological stone, ancient stone. So this is Muhammad. He wrote his name. When we saw it, we, we were team. Uh, researching between us, one archaeologist, he said, this is like vandalizing the archaeological site. But for us, which is just for me, as, uh, at least, it's very beautiful. And I found like a graffiti by stone in archaeological site and kind of engagement between uh, 
present people with the site and I call it a graffiti when it, we exhibit this photo and we call it a graffiti by stone. And for me, it is like in uh, this engagement, like the first stamp of a human hand in the cave to say, I am here. So it is like uh, my, my identity. So many of them, they wrote their name in the archaeological site. And the same in the in Babylon, the same in Ur, we find them, they write their name. For us, it is not vandalizing. It is if you see the graffiti as vandalizing the city or the walls. So this is not, it is engagement and big art for people and for for the artist. So I uh, we this is the differentiation between the archaeologists their view and the artists when they enter the site and the researcher. This is what we concentrate on it. Underneath, uh, underneath and alongside the debris that is modern Iraq lie the remnant of past powerful and rich cultures, which are still vibrating uh, with the possibilities for more positive futures. Here I found a relation of ruins to uh, to a future or futures, its capacity uh, to invent or imagine a time to come, even as it seems to fall back in, into uh, time past. My project is to attain to the this past in order to imagine a future that is yet to come, where the past is littered with the debris of these futures while our present incorporates uh, the, uh, the, uh, the uh, unstable collective memory of hopes that have long since been abandoned. Uh, and finally, Finally, as I said, this is, I mean, this is the, this is the first uh, research paper to prepare ourselves for next, uh, for second phase of our project. And uh, the point, the important point of this, uh, in this paper is this, the final one. In the research, in the research project, I now consider, consider this ongoing state of ruination in its greater global context. The renovation which we all occupy in past colonial context. I am concerned to address the possibilities <coughs> for addressing the ruins as a new aesthetic, which attends to this history, the latent power of ruins in the present. I'm vibrating, I mean. As that which might provide the foundations for a new relation between past and the present. And this is actually explain the, the trajectory which I show you. This point explain this point. One which uh, dislocate the uh, uh, traditional spatial temporal continuity of okay, history, of time, of sequences. So this is, this is this is about the trajectory. So about uh, it is to uh, uh, one which uh, duplicate the traditional spatial temporal continuity of history of time of sequences. This past, uh, this past is not our present, but future. We inhabit this ongoing state of ruination. I mean Iraq or Mesopotamia. We explore this state as offering other kinds of futures, other moods of temporality. As an artist and researcher, I inhabit an ongoing state of ruination as powerful as potential for renovation and enabling dialogue between our experiences of ancient antiquities, colonial occupation, and the ruins of wars. I mean, wars, I experienced like uh, three wars and violence in Iraq, and two of them uh, were international. I mine the past in our, or said in my performances of the present producing artwork, which delineate a new relation to the past and the uh, and to possible futures. So uh, we, in this paper, I mean, in this phase, as we pre prepare ourselves for the second phase, the most important question is, could the archeological ruins gives 
opportunity to extrapolate our future. And here it is, I have some image. So this is this image from, this is a press release of, um, of our exhibition at the Brunei Gallery, which <coughs> deal with the same thing. And here it is the, the poster. Uh, and here it is one corner of this exhibition, which is big exhibition, cover two level of Brunei Gallery in London. And then we, uh, I, in 2000, ruins, ruins technique was coined in 2008. Uh, when I left Iraq uh, by myself, when I left Iraq in, two, in the end of 2006, November 2006, uh, and uh, um, to Paris and then to London, I really traumatized by wars and violence after three, 35 years. And this is affect my work. And uh, I put this, uh, this definition ruins technique just to explain my work to explain uh, my work in that time which is linked to my ex physical ex experience with the war and thank you that is all